Awesome. Welcome, everyone, to the Late Night Restaurant Show, the only late night restaurant show in North America, probably on the world, too. But who's counting? Anyways, we have a great guest tonight. Michael, are you in New York? I can't hear you, so <laughs> just nod. <laughs> Anyways, we've got a legend on the show tonight, literally a legend. And also, we're doing something different tonight that we've never done before. And uh, just as I text the guy, like, I, I, how many times I have to tell the guy that it, we're doing his products today, where my show is showing. But we're live on all the social channels tonight, and then this will be up on our podcast channel. But reminders that tonight is not a podcast. It's never been a podcast, but we're excited about this. So we're going to bring the cameras on here in a second. But before we do that, we have, <laughs> we have to talk about the National Restaurant Show in Chicago. It's happening next Saturday to Tuesday, May 18th to the 21st. But all that good stuff, you know, if you're not going, you suck. You should go because it is awesome. And there's 55,000 professionals going to be there, 700,000 square feet, which is really a big room. I wonder how many bathrooms they have. Well, probably a lot. Anyways, enjoy tonight, people. This is a legend we have, and we have a surprise tonight that we haven't done. First time we've ever done this before, so hopefully it works. If it doesn't, we just won't do it again. But anyways, I think it's going to be perfect. So anyways, enjoy tonight. Here we go. Here we go. Michael, welcome to your first, you've been asking to be on the show and I'm like scared to ask you because you're a legend to be on the late night restaurant show. I am a legend. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, here's the thing. First of all, you can't do an intro like that because you don't really get to become a legend until you're dead. You don't get to decide that other people decide that. What? But, uh, you were. Very, very sweet of you. What I, the reason I had the smirk on my face when you came on was because I was actually <laughs> admiring your intro. The, the shot of the guy eating the burger. Is that that's, Tommy. Oh, that's, okay. my co that's my co-host in his 80s. <laughs> in, in, the, in the 1980s, when he had hair to mullet in a burger. That's all in the did. 80s, not in his 80s. Okay. No, no, no. He's not, yeah. I have an 80-year-old co-host. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, you do that to make yourself feel good. I get it. <laughs> that's good. That's Very how good. we do it in Canada. We bring on really old seniors to our shows. Dude, I can't wait to talk to you about Canada. Like that. And, for, and all the way, I like the way you drop it. I've been begging you to be on your show. <laughs> and it's the absolute truth. <laughs> so it's like we have a deal. I beg to be on the show, and then he calls me a legend. So it works out well. Well, you are. I've heard so many good things about you. And then I've had a chance to be on a few with you, with Monty, and your knowledge. Like I can just sit and – do you know what you should do? You should create oh. – you should be one of those sleep app voices. <laughs> right? you just You're talk like, oh, first of all i talk way too fast like there's no way i'll give somebody like i'll give somebody an i'll give them an anxiety disorder if I <laughs> you, you know what let's talk food cost you don't want to do one of those and then you just like this is what you should do and you well, do you that know, all night i understand all that stuff entrepreneurially and obviously on an operations level but i want to blow my brains out like what's fun about that I know, but I, I was just thinking just a different way. It's another vertical, as they say, another vertical for your brand. Vertical is really big right now. That's the big one. Vertical pivot. Let's talk about the Whoa. new. Are, are we bringing back the P word? Yeah, there's pivot. There's vertical. Uh, everything now requires some sort of positive thing, which is good, I guess. But it's just funny that this is a, the new trend. Well, I am honored to have you on our show. And you are our first guest that we're doing something different with. I saw it, it works. You know, I was watching 
Fallon the other night and I was like, you know what? He's got a cooking thing on there. So we're going to copy that. You know, I said, if they call me then and say that you can't copy my shit, Jay, I, I will then celebrate because that means we're actually making something noise out there, but we have something special tonight. And just because you're, you're, it's, it's really because you're on the show, Michael, that we're doing this tonight. I'm really excited. I'm really, I was going to say it's exciting to be here, but I'm actually in my house. So um, I'm really excited to be on your show. Honestly, like I love what you do. It's really cool. And it doesn't feel like a podcast, which is great. Well, we, we also are not a podcast, by the way. I know, I know, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I know, I know. We, we pretend we're not, but we, we sometimes get classified as one. Well, we try not. And like tonight, I'm in the middle of a hotel lobby doing this and this is the third show that we did tonight in the hotel lobby i was at a restaurant today michael oh my god i was at a restaurant today been around since 81 and we talked about his dad passed and and it was like an emotional podcast it was it was pretty heavy it was incredible it was beautiful and it was one of those restaurants that just are you know a staple forever and Man, was it incredible talking to him today. So I had an uh, awesome opportunity to do that. Sorry? What city? In Saskatoon. Okay. Do you, do you even know where that is? No, I don't. But, I, but I've heard that name before because I've been, I've been to Canada about four times. Well, you know Seven Shifts. Yeah, of course. So this is the home of Seven Shifts. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Seven Shifts is downtown here. So, yeah, it's really in the middle of nowhere. But you know what? It's, one of the, it's called the Paris of the Prairies. And they say that because it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful little city in the middle of nowhere. No one knows about it. We don't want anyone to know about it, too, because it's just perfect. It's just a perfect little city. And the food scene here is just gorgeous as well. The restaurants are just amazing. We, we've had an, I've had some of the most incredible meals here this week. And just the people are just so nice. They're just so nice. I've had people walking up going, like, what are you doing? Podcasting. They're like, okay, well, I'll listen tonight. You know, those kind of things. So. Um, and then I've done a couple of shows here. I, 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 I got to tell you about this because I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. It's all about me, by the way. No, the show. No, yeah. you. I'm really happy you're on my show. This is, <laughs> this is what we do. We invite people on our show that we talk about ourselves. Um, I did, a, I did a lecture this week. I did it last week as well in Whistler on dishing out optimism is what it was called. And I'm, tired of talking about all the negative crap in our industry right now. I'm, I literally am tired after almost 1500 shows. I'm tired. I'm, I'm done with that talk. So I've been doing some lectures on the, I'm looking at the industry through like more of a being an optimistic Great. viewpoint and being in very, you know, that we know that there's shit out there, I'm not saying that there isn't, but really looking at things more positively. And it's been awesome. So, you know what I did? I showed you the hand trick the other day, right? I showed you the hand trick when we were on that one show where it made your finger grow. Oh, yeah, yeah. But to tell everybody who's watching. Right? So you take your hands. This one. You can do it again. You want to try it again? You take your line here, this line here, and you put it together. Mirror it up, and your fingers will be slightly longer than the other one, like mine is. Mm -hmm. Then you tell your shorter one to grow eight times, and it will actually grow. And then you put it back, and then they're the same height. Right? So... We did that, but then what we did on this one is that we hollered at water for a minute in a glass on the table mm -hmm. to try to make it taste bad. So imagine a hundred and some people in a room <laughs> at all tables, one glass in the middle of the table, and the tables are literally screaming at a glass of water <laughs> that it tastes bad for one minute. You know what this reminds me of? Go ahead, continue. No, 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 no. What's it remind you of? You ever seen Ghostbusters too? <laughs> the, the 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 whole thing is about the gel that's under the city, and they what? talk to it, and it creates what it bubbles up. Motion, so when they yell at it, it reacts. Shit, you're right. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's exactly right. So <laughs> now I'm not going to do that because it reminds me of it. No, it, it, we did that just to show the power of how we, if you you know. It wasn't really the idea around making the water taste bad. It was the fact that I told them that they could believe in making water taste bad that they all believed in the whole room that they could do well, that. Well, this goes to that oh. class. That's a great point. Cause this goes to the thing we always talk about this when it comes to people's perception of food or beverage, we always tell people like, listen, and this is, there was actually a test done on this where they actually used electrodes for this um, back in the sixties. And what they did was they took, they got a Michelin star chef, mm -hmm. took a very classic like steak, potatoes and asparagus and a glass of red wine. 
and they had uh, the same person eat it with electrodes on them, but they put them in a warm cabin with rain outside and a fireplace and the whole deal, and they curated the whole experience. They did the same exact plate of food, same dish, served the right way, um, and it was served uh, in a prison cell. Okay. So the feedback on the food was completely different because they didn't realize they were in a test. So no way. Seriously? Your environment, your temperature, everything that your brain perceives something to be uh, is why it's so good. Hence also why you're starving, crap food tastes good. Think about that. It makes no sense. Your brain so just you, shades it. Do you find restaurants sometimes just don't believe in what they're doing? Oh, what a great question. Not to be negative. No. Um, no, no negative here. No, no, for sure. I don't think it's that. I, I think that, that people don't understand how much power they have in any space they create for other people to inhabit. Right? Like, if you think about the difference in, like, I always use Disney as an example, but if you think about Walt Disney, there's plenty of guys in that time who made theme parks and fairs. Mm -hmm. Right? But did they care about, I hate to say it, but, like, in this way, the guest experience and taking everything so personal to say every single person, everything that person feels, touches, tastes, etc., all really six senses is my responsibility. That's a very yeah. different, right? So when you're a restaurant owner, a hotel owner, and you say every single thing that anyone perceives is my responsibility, that's a different level of awareness. Wow. You know, so I think it's more of an awareness thing more so than people not caring. I think, yeah, people, no, I think they care. I, think I, think they care. I don't think they realize what business they're in. Well, yeah. Like, do you think that some restaurants just don't make it because of that? It's not because of the food location. Sometimes maybe it's the operational, you know, running the operations of it. But do you think sometimes they just don't have that spirit or that drive? I think, yes. And I think the, the most binary answer I could give you would be if, if you're in a business of fixing cars and you can't fix them, you're going out of business very quick. Right. But in hospitality, they think you cannot not be hospitable, understand service and be to be of service to other people. Yeah. I think they can skip that part and somehow the car is going to get fixed. It doesn't. You go out of business and they go, oh, the business sucks or it was a bad location or this mm -hmm. and that. You can have a crappy location, crappy food and crappy drinks and do very well if you understand the game you're in. Do you? Yeah, well, I, I see that a lot. I, I, I really do. I. I see it more than everything is all the restaurants that I've working with. And it's, it's amazing how many just don't. Well, I, I want to share this with you too, because I want to get into that because we are, you know, I'm, we're looking at doing more and more coaching and integrating AI into coaching and stuff like this up here in Canada, doing all that crazy shit. So we can actually stay close to what you, all the cool stuff you guys do down there. Um, but it's it, what we're finding right now is just people just not having that, I don't want to say spirit. It's almost like this drive. It's this weird drive that they've been defeated almost so much. And they just keep hearing this negative shit. And I just want to create that positive for them. I want to create that mind that you can do it. Mm. And I don't know, like, cause you know, much stuff I've talked to with restaurants, like over the 20 some years I've been doing this is you get and you sit with them and then you go through everything over. This is what you're doing wrong. And here's what you can improve on and blah, 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 blah. Every corner. And then they come back and they haven't done anything. And I, I want to create this idea where they can believe. And that was a big part. So what we did this actually, it was some of the people in the audience were posting on TikTok today. TikTok was, um, I, I asked them to start creating uh, gratitude vlogs every day on social. And actually, I think when you post stuff on social within a gratitude model, it almost holds you accountable within what you say that you're grat you know, you're grateful for. So I actually saw it today. Gary was his name. And he's a great guy. He owns a restaurant here, just south of here. And uh, he was doing his, and I said, for two weeks, if you do a gratitude vlog for two weeks, stuff will change. And I, I said, I'll guarantee it. I don't know if it will, but I feel it will. And I just want to create this energy that people can do anything in this industry. If you just have the right mind and you keep thinking positive and, so, uh, well, no, look, I appreciate that. I think there's a couple of things. So let me just tell all your listeners out there that I'm, I'm a very positive guy, but also I'm not trying to win a fucking popularity contest. I'm trying to be authentic. And I think we live in a world right now where everybody's terrified of that. Why uh, is that though? Why is that Michael? 
Well, because I think we, we live in an attention economy. And when you look Ooh. at social media, when you look at social media as an example, so I, I do this test all the time. You know when you go on social media and you look at people uh, taking pictures of their fucking pastrami sandwich and they're showing the whole world that the most interesting thing, the Patrick Connors is a very, very good friend of mine and his beautiful fiance Juliana just texted me about the, um, the sleep app idea you have. And, and oh she, shit! Did he? Say- <laughs> yeah, sorry, his, his fiance said it. They're two of my favorite people on the planet. I love them, and they're my family. I love them. So much. Um, I love it, dude. And a big shout out to Stetson. Um, but uh, no, I mean, like, look, right now, if I told you, right, let me just take the schmuck who did the pastrami sandwich. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I took that guy. Let's say he's a normal everyday Joe, and he goes, "Ah, oh, look at my pastrami sandwich. I want someone to post about, so I get the dopamine hits on the likes." Yeah. Right. If I told them, hey, this is going to be published in the New York Times, would you say this and post this? And they'd say, well, no, of course not. And say, right, because that would be credible and you would care about your message. But because it's just your feed, you can be a moron, a thoughtless moron. Now, I'm not saying for the people out there who are like, what, I can't be proud of what I had for lunch, right? That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. What I'm saying is if, I, if you told me right now I could post a message on, the, on, on you know, Us Weekly or the New York Times or the Washington Post, I would think very carefully about what I would write, right? But with social media, we just have carte blanche to vomit out any thought we have. We basically fart digitally, right? <laughs> and, we write, and that's what it is. So I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with doing mindless fun posts. What I'm saying is when that's the, when that's the trend, there's a problem. Um, <laughs> Stetson is awesome. Stetson is the man. So anyway, um, he's a very <laughs> sweet puppy. Um, so... So basically, it's one of those things where I look at it and go, look, just imagine your voice is important. So that's why you mm-hmm. can see people aren't. It's why Sylvester Stallone doesn't like go online and say stupid shit and look at my sandwich because he's Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Because the people will judge him. So I'm just saying, like, my, my point is in an attention economy, I think that a lot of people use social media and they don't really feel that valuable to begin with or they really care about what they have to say. And also, how about this? What if I like the perspective in social media? And I don't mean to be on a soapbox here. I, I do look at it this way. What if I told myself, just like an operator or a restaurant owner or any, or Walt Disney, what if my words actually affected another person? And what yeah. if they gained something from what I had to say? Right? What a concept. Right? Like, versus look at me. Well, look at me. Well, you know, sorry, I, I interrupted you there, Michael. Sorry. That's what you get. I, I accept your apology. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. Well, I want to say this because I did this just the other day and, and I apologize. I, I screwed up. Well, I'll do it tomorrow. But every week I said we should. So I posted, actually, I, I did a call, a uh, shout out to Monty. So I said, Tuesdays, I said, we post so much about ourselves and then people will tag people in the bottom and they do this big sure. list. Of, first of all, I hate it. So I'm just going to be. I did it today. I get it. You know, I get it. Right. They do this list. I'm not a fan of it. Because I'm not on the list all the time. But anyways, I, I do, they do this list. I'm more jealous. Maybe that's it. Um, that's okay. But they but I said, why don't we post about other people? Like do a post direct about them and get other people to do a shout out to like Monty we did. And I cannot believe how many people had a comment about Monty because we took a minute and just posted about someone else. To your point. Why don't we take a minute and just post about other people opposed to trying to gain from something that we've done for the audience? Mm-hmm. Am I, am I, I don't know. I did again. I did Rolfi last week and then this week I got stuck cause I've been traveling, but I, I just think there's an opportunity to be grateful for these people in our lives and, and to give them the platform that we have and to shine, make, you know, shine. And, and Christian's done this with, with a lot of the stuff that he's done too, but, I just think there's an opportunity there to do more of that. And I, I think that's similar to what you were mentioning. Sure. Is right. You know, like this whole social media thing is just, this is why I fucking love Canadians. Okay. Because I'm doing right now, I'm doing a talk show. What the average, the layman person would go, Oh, it's a podcast. So this is awesome because only Canadian hosts would be talking about the fact that we need to post about other people and build them up. This is why I fucking love you guys. Because <laughs> Because it's real, it's authentic. Like you genuinely are taking. Well, the you know, I think it's well, great. Well, Michael, you're right. Like I, we were doing a show. I was listening to a sh- my. I don't really listen to my own shows, but I was listening to a show That's today. A lie. Been, you're a liar. Of course you. No, do. I'm fucking. Right. Well, I know. I know. I'm serious. I listen once. I my voice drives me crazy. But I was listening to because I had a passenger with me. Today, I was driving off at the airport, 
And Kevin, I said, you got to listen to this. It's funny as shit. Like I was talking about, we had Christian on and we were talking about the fact, you know, they were talking about me, which was weird. Um, and just mentioning that Jay, you're, you're, you are who you are. Like, and that's who I am. Like what you see, I'm, I'm an, a schmuck. Like I just, I, I try the most. I've been in the industry forever in my life and I'm grateful for all that, but I, it's not like I, there's nothing there. I, I, I cannot be fake. I try. I can't, or I try lying and I can't. And sometimes it gets me in serious shit because I'm more true than and more authentic than maybe I should be where I'll sit in boardrooms and I'll be like, no, this is not how it is. And I think it's important to do that because here's my theory on it. Until you know where you stand, it's hard to improve or go forward. And I find too many people don't know really where they stand or they're not can on. I, it. Can I interrupt you? Because you're yeah, you're right. you can interrupt anytime. Yeah, you're you're, like you know, you're, the, you're very sweet to me. But uh, no, it's this. It's like what you're saying resonates to me because I, I talk about this all the time when I when I work with clients or I, I mean, I call them clients, but people that I work with. And I always say, like, look, all it's like, you know, all all progress starts with the truth. So oh, even for myself, nice. like I, I, I have to look in the mirror every day and go, where am I full of shit? Where am I completely full of shit? And if I, when I stop doing that, I get in trouble because I start recognizing the fact that when I can't look myself in the mirror and go, this is where you're completely full of shit and you're not being authentic to yourself, you got a fucking problem. And it's taken me till my 40s to start doing that because you kind of skip my 30s, you, you skate by it a little bit. You're really yeah. excited about the fact that you're out of your 20s and your 20s. You're basically excited that you're not a kid anymore. And then all of a sudden you go, okay, I'm not going to get anywhere. This is to your point. Until I can look in the mirror and go, okay, what am I, what's my actual arsenal? What am I working with for better or worse? And then once I do that, my days are great. I handle people and the way that I can be a benefit to them. And that doesn't always mean telling them what they want to hear either. Yeah. You know, so, you know, and it's also like, well, I'm lucky because same thing for me. I get to work with by far the greatest group of professionals maybe in the country or in one group. I mean, um, you know, it's, it's pretty epic. So I'm very lucky in that way. And I get, you know, I've been lucky. I get to surround myself with incredible people. Well, on that note, cause you're incredible. And like I said, it's awesome to have you on the show. Let's, Thanks, let's, uh, let's introduce our new segment that we're introducing tonight. People, Michael, what should we call it? We should call it look, but okay, I name it after you, but that's kind of cheesy. That's cheesy. Cause my last name, the tips thing. Like, I would say this. I would say, how about look but don't touch? Because what it really is is torture for people, <laughs> right? It's like, look, we're going to get a great chef. Yeah. We're going to talk. All right, let's bring him in. You can't have, but enjoy yourself. All right, well, enjoy this, folks. This is our first segment integrated into the late night show. We did this because Michael's on the show tonight, and we know how important food is in our industry. So we found this, this chef to do this. So welcome. Let's welcome Daniel, chef. How are you, Dan, Daniel Calabresi? There you yeah. go. Look at that. Michael said it. I didn't. I didn't want to say it because I, apparently I've been freaking it up for a couple of years. Been, you've been butchering it for the past two years, Jay. I know. I you never once corrected. <laughs> me. I I'm not the person. I'm not the type of person to correct anyone on that. <laughs> hey, chef. Can I ask you a question before you get started? Of course. Uh, so you won Chef of the Year this year or last year? I won Chef of the Year for 2023. Amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. That's really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. And he's a cool guy. He's a cool kid. He's cool. He's, and he works at the King Edward Hotel yep. in downtown Toronto. And I'm here right now. Are you? <laughs> yeah. I, well, you I'm say that looks a little work. different than your basement kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Right? Dude, yeah, I want that kitchen so badly in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Yeah, yeah, I want to. Yeah, it's a big illusions of grandeur for me when I'm cooking at home for the wife. You know. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So, chef, what are we doing tonight? What do we What do we got on the menu? So tonight we're working with uh, a little bit of Beyond Meat. So um, the guys at Beyond Meat were nice enough to send over some burgers. Um, they also sent over some sausages. So so I cooked up one of each. Um, I was thinking tonight just for the burger, we're just gonna go classic we're gonna go with some uh some boston lettuce tomato and uh red onion and then i also have this barbecue sauce i've been in love with this on burgers for the past couple couple weeks it's like what kind, a, of, barbecue, what kind of barbecue sauce is it 
It's a, it's actually a barbecue sauce made with balsamic vinegar. Oh, interesting. Yeah, no, amazing flavor. When, uh, when I found out about this stuff, it was like the guy that told me about it, he's like, it's either you love it or you hate it. And I love it. So yeah. Is this mostly vegan? This dish is it yeah. fully vegan or no? Um, I'd say for the most part, yes. Except uh, for what, the bun? Yeah, the bun, because we're using brioche. Okay. I wouldn't use anything else. My favorite <laughs> vegan is probably watching this in the whole world. So hopefully you should <laughs> get something out of this. Of course. Of course. So we just have a nice brioche bun, toasted. Hey, Michael. Uh, yes, sir. I, 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 I'm going to ask you questions because I've been telling people this kind of stuff forever. I always tell restaurants that they can change their menu Without changing the menu, they can do a lot by just changing the bread, the sauces. Yeah. The bread and the sauces. Bread and the sauces changes everything. I would say the only, the only problem with that operationally, and I'm not a kitchen guy, this is more, this is Brian Duffy's lane, but obviously I know a lot about the kitchen, is that causes all sorts of uh, inventory issues, depending on what you're selling. So it can be very costly. True, true. Sauce is no big deal. But the bread can become very expensive when it's just sitting there and people don't order. Yes. Well, yes. I was thinking replacing. See. Oh, like a feature, like a weekly feature? Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us that technique there, Chef. Oh, this one? This is the, the hold and hit. <laughs> we, call that, we call that the IHOP special. Yeah, exactly. You know how you, you do it with those old... Um, those glass like Heinz ketchup bottles. You're supposed to like just hold it and hit. It comes out. It's perfect. The whole, thing about, the whole thing about the ketchup, how you hit you hit the thing on the side, the actual is it fifty seven? Yeah. You hit yeah. on the side, that whole thing knock it never seems to work for shit. No, it never works. But I mean it's always fun to watch people try. <laughs> So we have actually Beyond Meat is watching the show right now. So I've asked them some crazy stats because Beyond Meat has also come up with some crazy stats recently. Uh, they also have a new ingredient deck that's in their products that they're coming out with avocados. Chef, is this oh. one got the avocado oil in it? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Um, actually, that's a good question to ask Beyond Meat. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for him to avocado. respond, James. <laughs> I mean, I, they had, Beyond Meat had sent me a case of smash burgers I oh, say, yeah. last, last summer. And uh, I'm not sure if those had the avocado oil, but I've tasted this one and I've tasted oh, the, no, they don't. the smash burger. A little bit different. Beyond Meat just said no. No? 
Oh man, I was kind of looking forward to it. Dude, Not in Canada, yeah. I think James. Oh. <laughs> so, so chef, what what makes yeah. a good burger? Tell us, tell us some technique here. You, you've made a few in your life. I made a couple. I made a couple, but I've never worked in places that made burgers, so uh, it's kind of hard <laughs> to say. It's all personal experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it's that probably, kind of shop is what he's saying, Jay. I don't work at McDonald's. <laughs> I don't work at McDonald's, but I would work at Wendy's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think a good burger is is both the sauce and the the toppings. The toppings, and if it's built the right way, if it's built the wrong way, it just falls apart. I've, I heard somebody say that about a burger once. If it's built the wrong way, it'll just fall apart. Now, I never actually listened to them on how to build it, but I heard the saying. So, Jeff, can I can I tell you my perspective on it? I think it's sexy as hell. Yeah, here let- on, on a culinary level, you'll appreciate this being a foodie I, that I know you are. Yeah. So, and everyone knows in the sushi world when sushi is on the high level, there's no difference yeah. in, te- in density or texture between rice and the fish. They're perfectly balanced. Yeah. You don't know where one ends and one begins. Right, yep. there's way more love put into the rice even. What's love in yeah, all of course. you know what I mean? Of course. Outside of the, the, the firmness of the bun holding the burger, when you bite into yeah. a burger, the texture of the meat and everything else should blend right into the bun. There should be no texture difference in density. That's a perfect burger. Mm. Right? <laughs> like it's the same with the rice and the fish. Like, yes, you're gonna have different elements with tomato or things like that that might have different ripeness, but the meat and the bread needs to be one. And then it's just you know, with cheese and like you get the good fat from that good meat. You know, you get a good like, you know, when you're doing like a three blend, something good, like a short rib, you yeah. know, you get like, um, what am I thinking? A uh, short rib or brisket and maybe like a sirloin. And it just yeah. goes to a tri blend like that. And you get that mixed with the bread. And it just completely melts into one thing. It's fucking heavy. <laughs> well, you know what? Even though you can't taste this tonight, I know you wanted to. I did. I know you wanted to. <laughs> it's the look, but you can't touch. Yes. yes. <laughs> but you know what? Having said that, having said that about, you know, the textures blending together and everything, I will try this. I will try it. And we'll oh, you'll, you'll, you'll try this for us? Yeah, I'll try this for you. I was told that burgers are supposed to drip down your arm. I mean. Oh, that looks That's good. Yeah. So this so, is okay. This let's is see here. Let's get close at. up to so Beyond Meat. So James is all happy. There we go. The Beyond Meat burger. James. So we're gonna see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, I'll put that on social. While you're chewing, you know what's great about that hat? <clears throat> <laughs> it's obviously classic. You know, mm-hmm. uh, classic, classic chef attire. It's all yep. it's in, in a whole like field of chefs, if someone says, "Michael, who's going to cook your last meal?" I'm going to point you and go, "That guy." That guy with the tall hat. Yeah, with the yeah. hat. The guy with the hat. Let him cook it. <laughs> with the hat. With the hat. Michael, yeah. do you know the story of the hat? Huh? Do you know the story of the hat? Uh, no, I don't at all, and I should. Chef, I chef should does. Know. Chef does. I've I've heard I've heard a couple stories, but I want to hear your story, Jay. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to hear yours. No, no. I've heard that the higher the hat, the higher the position. The, the higher the rank. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. I mean, it could, it could be that. It could be that. From like what, like Victorian age, maybe? <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it probably was. Did yeah. you say that? It probably well, was. Yeah. I mean. Most likely, but I mean, at the hotel here, we all wear them. So, well, yeah, it's it's not a it's not it's it's not a motel either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, how's the taste, Chef? Give us a little bit of the taste here, because Beyond Meat, I find that they taste incredibly different now. I know James is not the same wine, so shush. But I, I think it I think it does. It tastes different. Does it taste okay, Chef? Tastes good. Yeah. Tastes good. Yeah. yeah. Michael, what's your take on the whole plant-based pro- the pro- plant-based foods? Well, honestly, now, be honest. You're not going to hurt James's feeling. Well, obviously, I, mean, I don't know. It depends. It just text me like how much money they're giving you for this. Um, <laughs> no, I. Uh, 
honestly, like I would say when it first, first of all, like I'm a huge advocate, obviously it's better for the planet. It's awesome, but it's got, you know, it's not the same as like, you know, Bitcoin, right? Like they're not taking up energy all over the world. Right. But they're, you know, it's like, they're, they're doing a, they're doing a great thing. So I think it's better, but I think it's actually just a precursor of the way the world is going, not to go on a tangent yeah. here, yeah. but look, my daughter's three years old when she's 15, they're going to talk about people used to smoke real cigarettes, drive cars with gas and eat real meat. And it's in 12 years, it's probably going to be like a thing of the past. Like meat will yeah. still be there, of course, but it'll be high level, high grades of meat. I think the classic ground chuck will be replaced in food chemistry in 12 years from now. Like it, it'll be a necessity, right? Once it, once it tastes the same, it will just be better. And I think what we're seeing is the beginning of the electric car in the late nineties. Right. Yeah. Everyone's like, yeah. eh, it's OK. Maybe it'll be electric cars. And now they're like, dude, it's the best thing ever because it outperforms a real car. And I think that's what's, yeah. what's happening with Impossible and Beyond. I think that they're eventually going to crack the code. I think the tough part for people is that the calories and the health factor isn't that incredible on either one. When you look at how many chemicals are involved. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you're like, OK, well, there's a lot of chemicals involved with cows, too. So, yeah. You know, it's not like, you know, unless you're eating, unless you're eating Kobe beef, you know, it's like you're dealing with a lot of the same things. So it's grass fed, but, you know, but they're also eating grass from something that had toxic rain on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think the same way, Michael, is that I just think that um, the world, well, first of all, I think we're going to be forced to in a way because we just can't feed everyone. Yeah. Well, we have, and I'm, I'm, cause I'm right now in cattle country and all I heard this week was the reduction of uh, size of farms. The mm-hmm. herds are being reduced huge. So it, it is unfortunate because it's just the cost is too much for farmers or ranchers to have the herds they used to in the past. So I think there's a lot of factors going into it, but you're right. As soon as they, well, they're getting close to cracking the code. I've been told by James uh, from Beyond Meat that the avocado ones, which we're hoping to get into Canada, you might be able to have them in the U.S. maybe next week when I'm down there. Um, but they say that it's 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 a much better product. So um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping because, and then I also think they, they understand that the chemicals have to be reduced or removed, but do you know, I created a burger, Michael? Uh, I was unaware of this fact. Chef Danielle remembers my story. <laughs> Don't giggle. It was a good idea. So we tried, I created, it was called the flex burger. Okay. So I reduced the cost of regular. I'm, sorry, I'm looking at Daniel's face right now. It's just like He's we're... laughing because he yeah. knows this story. Okay. It was a good idea. So I created a, it was called the flex burger. Cardinal meat made it for us. We actually won an award um, for the top innovative product of the year. And it was a 50, 50% blend of lentils and mushrooms, no chemicals, just literally lentils and mushrooms and some other products in there. And uh, I was, we reduced the cost of the burger patty, but didn't change the flavor profile because we used the high fat content in the ground beef. And, uh, we reduced it by 30% on cost and it was awesome. The only problem is, is that we called it a flex burger and people just didn't know where to put it on the damn menu. So we couldn't <laughs> sell any. We sold some, don't get me wrong. Well, I imagine with the mushrooms, it had a cool texture. So I, I bet that was good. It, it did. It didn't, it did, like, honestly, I'm not just saying cause we created a burger here across Canada um, that we tried selling it. And there's probably a trailer somewhere in Toronto with it still from five probably. years ago, but it was the texture was good. Like it was so important. Like you said, the texture earlier you mentioned about the bun, the texture was good. The flavor was good. There was lots of fat in it. So it was flavorful because uh, we went with a higher percentage on the, on the, on the beef side, on the fat. And uh, it was awesome. High protein because we had lentils in it. It was higher than a regular burger, burger patty on protein. I mean, we, we skipped one very important part of this. Probably the, one of the most important parts of this whole topic is how much better it is for the animals. Oh, I mean, yeah. God, yes. like this is this is going taking it back to looking in the mirror and saying you're full of shit with yourself is I'm a complete yeah. fucking coward. I love animals in every way. And the truth is, if I saw a cow on the street and it needed my help, I'd stop the fucking car and I'd carry it across the plane. Like I'm that guy. Right. But yeah. then I'll eat hamburger. No problem. Because I know I'm so removed from it. But if it was like, OK, I can have a T-bone steak tonight if I slit this cow's throat. But if not, I'll have a salad. I have a salad every three times a day. Yeah. I'm completely full of shit. So I know I know that that like the animal's life is more important than my general satisfaction or my need for a steak. It just is. And I and I, mo- even great chefs wouldn't kill an animal just to have a steak, right? I would. But no one wants oh you're going to go to the bloodletting. 
it's going to look like carry, right? Mm-hmm. Just so you can you can have a steak. No, people don't do that. But because we're so removed from how the sausage is made, we love this stuff, right? So it's just uh, when it comes to like standing up for animals, I think it's an awesome thing, and I think eventually we're not going to change what we are. We're we're carnivores, you know. Even though we're technically herbivores, we're carnivores by nature. You know, it so. is. And it, it is a. It is a big like the beef market is billions, and I think beyond is. The be not beyond, but the plant based. I've been told by James, and James, I'm sure will message me because he's listening to every word I'm freaking saying right now. Um, <laughs> it's one billion in plant based sales in Canada, and I forget the other billions, but it's in the tens of billions when it comes to the beef. So it's not like there's a long way to go to move into a 10 percent market share of plant based versus beef. Um, but it's on the right road. It's on the right road. But I, I just want to ask. So good, but, Michael. I mean, Jay, think about this. What you're saying right now, literally, this is what amazes me about the time. Like, how, how Chef Daniel, how old are you? Uh, 25. Okay, you're 25. Jay, how old are you? 58, 60, how old are you? Fuck you. <laughs> what are you, 40? 46. 46. 48. Oh, I mean, 48. 48. But here's the thing. So I'm, I'm like, I'm 45, so I got 20 on you, Daniel. Here's the thing in my lifetime. This is what Daniel's not going to really be able to appreciate in the same way. Yeah. Is I was born with like a rotary phone, right? Like, you know, you had to like spin it and the whole thing had the wire. I'm sure you did as well. You know, yes. so it's just like we've gotten into the world change so much. So even when you're like, oh, maybe you could only eventually get to 10 percent. We were talking about science fiction. Yeah. Like, literally, like, oh, they make this fake meat in a lab and everybody eats it like a burger at Burger King. Oh, that's real. It's almost 10 percent of them. That's unbelievable. That that's really happening. The most highest performing cars in the world are electric. Fucking yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Right? Before you know it, everyone's going to have their own personal drone. I'm not kidding. They've been testing them in Japan for seven seven years now. They're going to be taxi. First thing is going to be ambulances that they're going to land in the middle of the intersection. We're experiencing such an amazing time in our lives. And we're talking about electronic cigarettes and fake meat. Yeah. And electric cars. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. And we're always like, yeah, I think it's awesome. I think it's unbelievable. Awesome. It's awesome. All right, chef. Let's get on to the next product here. <laughs> let's get on to the next. Well, actually, first of all, we did have a comment come in and ask you to squeeze the burger. Squeeze the burger. Never oh, had that. All the shows I've done with food have never been asked to squeeze the burger. You want to check that moisture and that consistency and that texture. There you go. Squeeze away. I don't know. It looks like a burger to me. I know. I know it's. There's some juice there. It's like, let's move on. The well, there is products out there that are drier and are bored. Look at Jay's like, let's move on. Keep tips in his, in his, in his cage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chef. Uh, after I've destroyed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Completely right. destroyed that okay, one. Patrick was happy about that. Thank I you, mean, that was, it was a good burger. It was a it good was a burger. Good burger. It was good, Bert. Okay, what do we got going next? I mean, so <laughs> next is a sausage. <laughs> exactly. Next is a steak. Next is just James a just sausage. Be losing it, right, James? Jay, you didn't even ask me what I'm drinking. Yeah, no, I, I was going to get to that. Are you having a? Wait, what are you having? A light beer? <laughs> I have. Um, <laughs> Is, is it a light beer? <laughs> I'm literally only drinking because you said this is like a late night. Well, it was. It is. I know, but I'm in the middle of a fucking lobby. I can't have a beer in a lobby. Why not? Because it's not that kind of lobby. <laughs> it's not okay, that- um, no, I'm having a very classy beer. Knowing what is it? You know that, that I'm, 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 I've been on many, many, uh, you know, like shows in my life or my career on TV where everybody thinks I'm a hardcore mixologist, and it's a real thing. I was. Mixed oh, yeah. Of- yeah, let's, let's, However, talk, let's talk about that. All the, all the bar rescue crap. But what I'm drinking is PBR. So okay. all you boost snobs out there, I'm drinking an American classic. <laughs> <sighs> what, 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 what is that? What's what? That. This? <laughs> What's that? Is, that, is that a Beyond Sausage? It is. Is that is. a sausage? It is. It is. So I didn't Mike, want to you go. Ever sausage? You ever be on sausage? I have. It's very good, actually. It is. They're actually, I agree. They're actually very go. good. Very, very good. The um, what was the one they sent me in the summer, Jay? It was um, 
one of the spicy Thank you, James. Sausages. Very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. So this, is, so this is one of the um, this is one of the Beyond Meat sausages. Um, just cooked. Um, just seared it same way as the burger. Um, I didn't want to go too crazy with this because like when I'm eating a sausage or anything like that, cooking a sausage at home, um, I don't really like to add too, too much to it. It's just the meat for me. I don't really need a, need a bun. I don't really need the toppings, not like a burger. Um, now, like we saw with that burger, we saw a little bit of juice come off that. This one, you can see that, Jay? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit more. Quite a bit more. And honestly, the, the texture on this one is almost identical. Almost identical to... Hey, are, are you guys Italian by chance? I am, yeah. Okay, is that what he meant by hot Italian? Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got it. <clears throat> I was going to say, Ashton's not Italian, just so you know. <laughs> Michael's like... It's okay, though. Remember, Jay, I, I was probably disowned by the Italians after our first show with pasta. <laughs> yeah, we, won't, we, we don't want to talk about pasta of 2023. Hey, Chef, <laughs> let, me ask, Chef let me ask you a, a cooking question, if, if this is stupid or not. Could of course. You, could you sear that in, like, a really heavy avocado oil? to give it a little more of like that fat where it's going to be way, probably way too oily, but at least it would be a little more like a real sausage. Yeah, of course. Have a beyond, like really like, really like bathed in avocado oil. Of course. Of course. Um, that was just seared in veg oil, cooked in veg oil and then popped in the oven. Um, but if we sear that in a heavy avocado oil, yeah, of course, even the burger, we'd have a lot more juice coming off of it. Like a lot more fat content in it. Um, using an oil with like a heavy, heavy oil like that, we're definitely going to have a lot of. What about this? Of- what about this? What if you got avocado oil and you really put a lot of Italian seasoning, even good spices in it, and you punched holes in the Beyond sausage and you marinated it for like 24 hours in the avocado oil and, and, and then you cooked it? Of course. Of course. Yeah. If we, if we, marinated the sausage yeah and and some italian seasonings um you know maybe maybe some chili flakes in there yeah we could definitely get some some heat um some other flavors in there um but then again beyond meat also has a couple different flavors for their sausages so james can you list them because i know you're creeping us on the show tonight (laughs) I love my, I know, Daniel, have you noticed that Jay does this thing? I think it's very funny, and I do, I do appreciate it. Thank you, Beyond Meat. Did you rough people? Sorry. No, I love the way that, thank you, Beyond Meat, for everything you're doing for the planet. However, <laughs> of course. I think it's funny that Jay's made his, eventually, it's, it's basically his sponsors. He's made them stalkers. Oh, of course. <laughs> He's like, oh, look, they're, look, 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 look the, Burger the, King's the, creeping on us again. Right? The right oh, sky was on a few minutes ago. There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Oh, look, he, it's like he takes a girl on a date and then immediately because she calls him the next day to say, hey, that was really fun. He's like, oh, she's stalking me. Unbelievable, <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable this guy. Well, James, James is James. James is James is is a little stalky. I mean, he, he has. He's been he's great. Anyways. <laughs> no, I know. I, I knew he'd be watching tonight. I knew he would. No, he <laughs> was waiting. He's got a big bowl of popcorn. Sorry, I'll be on my podcast soon, James. I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so Chef, what's in that bowl there? What is that? It's just salad. Just a little bit of arugula, some uh what's the what's some radish? Huh? Do you carrots in there? Little flowers? Yeah, a couple carrots. Uh, just some carrot ribbons, uh, some radish. Oh here, here you go. Of, Look at that. A little bit of something. There you go, Michael. I know. I knew James would do that. I like it. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky. I don't have my little Italian freaking co-host on tonight. <laughs> Dominic would have would have been all over this. Anyways, <laughs> Chef, it's awesome that you you jumped on tonight. I just want to thank you. I know it's late in Toronto right now. It's ten thirty. It's past your bedtime, and. <laughs> 
I do know you have to get up early. I just want to thank you so much for jumping on tonight, sharing some Beyond Meat with us. And of Beyond Meat, James, we love you. You know I love you. You know I have Beyond Meat stuff all over my house. I we would get Beyond a tattoo, Meat. but, well, you know, if you pay me enough, I will. Um, but uh, We love it. We love Beyond Meat. I'm trying to get if tattoos you- at, the, at the show in Chicago next week. Really? <laughs> Are you being serious? Yes, I'm trying to fucking get. Well, I had a show today with Dying, and I challenged him with a tattoo at the food show in Chicago. What are you gonna get? What are you gonna get? Well, uh, well, oh, well the basketball, like, gonna... what are you gonna get? Right? Wouldn't that be fun? I mean, it depends. I mean, is it gonna be one of those things where it's like who can get the dumbest tattoo, or is it gonna be like something? Ooh, iconic? no, because I because I, I will definitely win on that. I'll fucking come home with something on it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, gee, why do you have a bottle of hoisin sauce tattooed on your back? Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like that, a blue whale on my fucking side. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, anyway, no, blue whales way too more too noble. So there'd be some girl that would see it, or your wife who would go, "Oh my god, that's amazing!" Uh, yeah, no way. Rose, rose on his back, back. James. Come on. You mean Anyways, his second, rose, his second rose on his back. Yeah, sure. exactly. Second rose. Anyways, James, thank you so much. And Chef, thank you so much for everything. You have a great evening. Thanks, We're going to have you back awesome. on the show again, and we'll do a different food. I got over 100 or 400 different food vendors that we can definitely pick different products from. What would you like <laughs> to cook next? Tell me, and I'll just I'll just find you that. What would you like to cook with? What, what are you dying uh, for? Chef? Tell me before you leave. I don't know. Well, we're going to stay away from meatballs. Yes, we... <laughs> I yeah, still have those the in the family. freezer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You you know what? Michael, you... they sent him so much meatballs that he can't. Hey, <laughs> chef, chef, can I can I suggest something? <laughs> of course. No, I mean serious, like as a as a oh, foodie. I, I a couple in the meatball. No, I, I would actually suggest the the most common thing that's very boring is how okay. to make chicken great. Like to be able to do like a seared chicken breast with like skin oh, on, be able to do that in the oven. Like for people to make that at home and make chicken really good is not easy for people. They don't understand it. They don't understand like you lose a lot when you pull the skin off, right? Even if it has a cooking technique. Yeah. Like yeah. things like that. Even if you just use the skin just for the cooking. Like, but if you could do a basic piece of chicken, I think a lot of people would be interested in how the hell do I make basic chicken yeah. basic? Actually, Jay, you know what? But let's do something like that. All right. Let's chicken do something like that. Yeah. I will so find let's you do chicken. some let's do some basic some basic cooking. Some basic, you know, cooking techniques. Uh grilled cheese. Basic dishes people can do at home. I know, but like those yeah, are no, but grilled cheese is actually a good idea, Jay, because I know. Yes. You, do, I like, you, do variations, you do variations of a grilled cheese. Like I tell people the minute you throw a tomato on a grilled cheese, you're you're a hero. Right? Like it's <laughs> we're doing VL, VLTs. Well, but see now you're going down a road. Now you're now you're now you're shaking hands with the devil because you're getting into bacon <laughs> and you're doing all these things. I mean, yeah, for God's the, sake, ba- the bacon's a little wild. Yeah, well, yeah, that's I a little mean, wild. No, but I mean the whole thing about grilled cheese. Let's talk about the economy. Okay? Well, that's well. <laughs> it, <laughs> <laughs> all right, chef. You have a good night. I know you're. I know you got to get home. Thank of you so course. much. Thank you, chef. Have a good one. Hey, oh, Michael. That was our first cooking segment. Just because you're on the show tonight, we introduced something new to our late night. This is what makes us not a podcast. It was fun. That was very cool. He's right? a great guy. He is, really is. You know, we have, I've done probably around a thousand shows of chefs and cooking like this and stuff like this. And Chef has been on so many times. We've had so much, I'm not going to say his day because I'll fuck it up. But I've had him on so many times. He's just outstanding. I love watching chefs get on here. And we've had so many incredible chefs come on and show some cool ideas. We did a show series called foodies and cars where I don't know if I told you this, but we made chefs cook in the car and uh, well, they drove around with another chef driving. It was hilarious as shit. And, never, uh, never, you never told me that that's no. Okay. We did a show. It was called foodies and cars. It was just like comedians and cars. And then we had chef Jeanette would pick up another chef in downtown Toronto from their restaurant. They would jump in the passenger seat. And then we would drive around. I would stream them in, do a podcast with them while they're driving around, asking the chef questions and, and chef um, Jeanette. And then Jeanette, they didn't know they got into the hot seat, which was where they cooked the meal. 
So the glove department was actually the black box. Mm. And they had like, she'd pull out like the frying pan behind the seat. And then the, like all these different things. And like, it was incredibly freaking hilarious. And by the end of the drive, they had created a dish in the passenger seat. And uh, it was awesome. It was absolutely incredible. So we, we did a, I don't know how many of those shows. And uh, it was, we actually, Sean did one from his barbecue truck out in San Diego. And um, yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. We had a lot of fun with foodies and cars. And uh, someone's, one of the guys, one of the chefs I know now in Toronto is doing another one, but it's so serious. We were not serious. But it all, it all started from, I think it was in California, they started the trying to reinvent the whole eating in cars during COVID. That's mm-hmm. where I got the idea from. And then I did a show with six chefs that had to cook in their car. And uh, for the show that we did, it was before we started the series. And we had Chef uh, Jeffrey uh, from Pasta, Montana. He's in his car and he's sitting there. And he keeps texting me, Jay, got to hurry, man. You got to hurry. And I'm like, why? Like, like he's sitting there. He looks fine. But he didn't tell me that he's in, in his garage in Arizona and he couldn't run the car. So he's sitting there and it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter during the day. <laughs> so he's sitting there and you can see the sweat starting to go down his face. Close up on the, close up on the beat of sweat. Yeah, <laughs> it was, I'm like, I'm so sorry, dude. You should have told me you're in your car in the garage in Arizona in the summer. Come on. Really? And James was actually working for a different company at the time. He was on the 401 on the side of the 401 highway cooking a meal with a chef in one of those pull outs. <laughs> it was we had so much fun. But uh, yeah, we started that series. So we've done a lot of cool things with chefs and I just love having them on the show. And I love um I love giving them the the spotlight because they all deserve it. And I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get to do it. I get to do without them. So I, I met a chef today at the restaurant that we got to go talk with this afternoon. And man, the, the, the old chefs, the guys that have been doing it for 30, 40 years. There's not too many of those classics around anymore. And they're just incredible to sit with and, and, and learn from and hear their stories. And, you know, they come in and they'll, you know, Ask them how much they portion stuff. And they'll be like, what? <laughs> this is my portion. Well, the, right thing about, the, thing about chefs, the thing about chefs that's funny is, is I always say there's obviously this business side to being a chef, right? That's, that's yeah. very tough on chefs. But it's like saying, imagine if a painter, if their canvas dissolved that night. Yeah. Right? Like that's kind of what it is. It's, it's, a, it's, it's really good. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, like every single night you do a painting and and the canvas dissolves and you got to tell people about it. I mean, luckily they have pictures now, but it's just not the same thing as consuming it. So, um, you know, it's like they do that. And then a lot of them, and I always compare chefs to artists and painters because you don't have to be a good painter to to say that you're the greatest painter in the world. Meaning it's also subjective that somebody who says, I'm a great painter. It's like, okay, you know, and their food sucks if they're a chef, you know. And then some some chefs don't have any way, any illusions of grandeur. They're incredibly humble and they care about process. Some are not. But at the end of the day, it's it's a it's a winning of the masses. If the masses say this is special, then you're someone just like an art. Right. So it's it's an interesting way of looking at it, because obviously artists get criticized because they have no under real understanding of budgets many times. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's business or you're an artist. Or like even to myself, I don't really consider myself an artist. I don't really consider myself an entrepreneur. I mean, I do. And then at the same time, I'm an entrepreneur. And I people say I'm a business. I don't really care about any of it. For me, it's more about what are you creating all the time? So I guess that makes you artistic. Not to make it about me, but what I'm saying is I think that chefs in that same way look at it and go, I'm not an artist, but I'm a chef. You know, And yet they have the ideology and the mentality of a chef. And they get frustrated by money. They get frustrated by limitations. They want better plates because... That's their canvas. Yeah. Right. So uh, I don't think at times they even give themselves enough credit for it, but it's, it's an interesting thing. Like everything else is always a budget. Same with designers. You know, you give a designer a, a space to, to do a hotel and they have a difficult time with budget because they want to paint what's in their brain, you know? Yeah. So, but chefs are amazing. They're also a complete fucking Royal pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> they're, they're, they can, they're very uh, difficult. They're sensitive. They also have a ton of weight on their shoulders and an immense amount of pressure. 
not just from creating great food, but really managing an entire kitchen and a business yeah. within a business. You know, so it's it's a it's a tough road to hoe. And I think that the the chef world is different than it used to be because today in today's world, what the executive chef was 20 years ago um, is not what it is now. No. Uh, now no. they, uh, people walk in and really work like a sous chef. And for you guys out there who don't know, a sous chef or the number two in the kitchen really is the person who runs the line and, and works with the line cooks now during service where an executive chef typically is always in the back doing admin work and building the kitchen and managing the kitchen and building recipes and I have a million other things. But in today's world, a lot of the new sous chefs call themselves an executive chef because they're the lead person in the kitchen. Mm. And they don't do a lot of the admin work. But I think chefs who love to cook would prefer being a sous. I don't want to deal with that. Uh, yeah. It's like I always, I always compare the sous and the executive to saying the executive would be like the president of basketball and the sous is the coach. You know, it's just a different thing. So um, well, but the kitchen is its own, own world. Michael, I want you to tell us in the next minute here all about Maverick Theory. And then we're going to wrap up because I know your time is precious. And I just want to thank you again for tonight. And it is an honor. It literally is. Dude, this is amazing. First of all, I love you, dude. You're such an awesome person. Like, I'm just so happy to – this is the first time I've ever done one of these. Well, I've never done one of these before. I've only done podcasts. But, um, no, where I've just been like – the minute I met you, I'm like, I really love this dude. I'm like, I, I just want to get to know him better and, and, and be part of his world. Um, no, yeah, so, so Maverick Theory is a company that I, I launched with two other co-founders, uh, David and Arno, David Foss and, um, and uh, Arno Stemmer. And, you know, it's been a pretty cool journey. I've, I've gotten to the point where we built basically a talent agency and a consulting firm. It's been pretty epic. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you got, you got 30 more seconds. Keep going. I'll keep going. Great. Yes. Keep uh, going. <laughs> no, I mean, look, we, we basically built, we built the ultimate resource for the industry and we, we did a great setup through bar and restaurant expo this year in Vegas. We launched and we have been inundated nonstop ever since basically right. everybody in the country in North America wants to open a bar and restaurant. And we wanted to build a team of, I think right now we have 33 consultants and not just consultants, mm. people who are working at the highest level. Michelin uh, rated, James Beard nominated, but all most importantly, great people. Wow. So we basically become the resource for the industry. And it's like, that's a big thing to say about your own company. We're at the fetal beginning of it, but it's been just that from the start. So it's been pretty awesome. I've been pretty awesome. Very grateful to work with so many incredible people that make me, make me look great. Oh, man, I don't think that's that hard. But first of all, I want to thank you. It is, thank like you. I said before, it's a pleasure. It's an honor to meet you and to have you on our late night. I apologize, Dominic's not here. He's a, he's hanging with Sean Walsh in oh, really? San Diego. I think he's on a date. I don't know if I told I was supposed to say that, but I think he is. Anyways, uh, I'm oh, just going to What? Thank you for not asking me any bar rescue questions. Not that I have a problem talking about it. This is well, fuck. I, I, that'll be part two, man. I, I can't, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna shoot everything off at once. We'll have you back. You, you, by the way, you're, you're coming back. And uh, we always love having our guests back a few times until they go, no, I can't do that anymore <laughs> it's on your show. But you are definitely going to come back. And I, I have to have my, my little Italian stallion with me, Dominic. And uh, I, I missed, it, missed my co-host because, uh, one, he asks a lot smarter questions than I do. And I, I think he's a cool dude, too. So <laughs> <laughs> I definitely miss him. But I just want to thank you. I want you. Sure. We'll talk about bar rescue stuff. Uh, you know, it's funny because I, I did a whole interview, a whole bunch of interviews with rock stars, and they actually said the same thing. They're like, thank you for not asking about music because <laughs> we just talked about food. Yeah, um, it was really fun hanging out, with, hanging out with Chef Daniel and just like just yeah. just beyond, beyond beef. So it's good. We'll have another chef on. We'll have you back and we'll have another chef on, and we're going to do chicken, like you said. We'll hold, you, we'll hold ourselves to that. And uh, once again, thank you again for joining us. And to everyone else, well, check us out at the National Restaurant Association show in Chicago. We are for very all you, proud For all you Americans, it's the NRA show, and it's not the National Rifle Association. It's exactly. Association. We, we can't say rifle in Canada. Um, but it's, it, is, it, it is the National Restaurant Association or the NRA show in Chicago. We are honored, and I am blown away that we are the only Canadian podcast that is going to be there. 
at this show. We are honored to be on their stuff, and uh, we're we're so glad. We're I'm blown away just to go there. People are like, "Oh, you do all this thing." No, I just want to go there, you know, and grab a snack and just walk around with my mouth on the ground. But, uh, anyways, thanks to the NRA and to uh, yourself, Michael. It is an honor, and oh, to everyone else. Me, and everyone else, please, please, please watch us every day, Monday to Friday, only late night show on, on the uh, what do you say on the air? I don't think you said airwaves. That. Airwaves on the social on the social. Does that make you sound old? It's like I heard someone say the Google this week here in Saskatoon. The Google waves. The Google. You just got to go to the Google. All right. Anyways, have a great evening, everyone. <laughs>